didn't yeah. know how to take them off the table. Yeah. So we're going to first of all, let's go through Nutrix. All right. So, Here we here go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. This is a big one. Okay. Nutrix yeah. though. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm listening. Walk us through we're gonna it. We're going to go we're going to go pretty deep. <laughs> okay. Um so First of all, um, now that we're not playing the content, let's just get it off the stream so that the copyright to check the soup, the uh, chat can follow along, and we don't have like this copyright thing. Yeah, chat, but like, is it still copywriting you guys, chat, or can it, you follow? It, along it won't do it from an image being on screen; it's from it playing. Okay, right yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, it says. Uh, Going into this tree. Hmm? Chat, let us know if you are you still can you see anything on the screen right now? Or of course they chat? can. They should, oh, they they should be able okay. to. Alright, cool. Um so here's so the Nutrix, the first thing here is the Nutrix dietary guideline recommendations. Uh from the Annals of Internal Medicine. This is uh should we go through yeah, you know what? Let's go through it. Okay. Um let's click on it. Mm hmm Okay. Got that open. Am I keyword searching something? Uh, not right now. Um, let's see. Okay, so you'll keyword. So just here's the recommendations that they came out with. The panel suggests this is just reading recommendations. The panel suggests that adults continue current unprocessed red meat consumption. Weak recommendation, low certainty of evidence. Similarly, the panel suggests adults continue current processed meat consumption. Weak recommendation, low certainty of evidence. Um, primary funding source to none. Now, this is one of the things that from funding sources is contested. Some people are saying that there is a funding source that wasn't disclosed, but whatever. We'll mm. get to that later. Okay. Um, let's go back to the, the Discord. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so here are the papers that it, were, where it was based on. It was based on several different meta-analyses. Uh, the first one was reduction of red processed meat intake in cancer mortality and incidence, a systematic review of meta-analysis of cohort studies. Mm -hmm. this, these are all, by the way, all of these are from Nutrix. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like Nutrix has a, has a recommendation based on, like, these are all from like the same group of authors. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is patterns of red and processed meat consumption and risk for cardiometabolic cancer outcomes, a systematic review of meta-analysis of cohort studies. Mm -hmm. Third is Effect of lower versus higher red meat intake on cardiometabolic and cancer outcomes, a systematic review of randomized trials. And the next one is red and processed meat consumption, risk of all cohorts mortality and cardiometabolic outcomes, a systematic review of meta-analysis of cohort studies. And the fifth one is health-related values and preferences regarding meat consumption, a mixed methods systematic review. Okay, so we're going to go through this. So here's, I mean, what they found was that um, they found low effect sizes, which means that even when things were statistically significant, they were, they didn't really pan out to having a high effect size. And then the chain of causation, they rejected the chain of causation, um, and they downgrade and they didn't upgrade the strength of the evidence for dose responses for several reasons. So the, the central inference that was used to reject causality and to not upgrade the evidence for dose responses was the following. Uh, causality, the central inference the panel is used to reject causality between red meat health outcomes was that if red meat and processed meat were indeed likely causally related to adverse health outcomes, we would find stronger associations in studies that specifically addressed red meat and processed meat intake versus studies addressing dietary patterns. The absolute effect estimates for red meat and processed meat intakes were smaller than those of dietary pattern estimates. Therefore, red meat is not likely to be causal to heart disease. Now let's just take in what that means. So dietary patterns, so what we can do is we can, we can look at people who are at the highest quintile of red meat intake compared to the lowest quintile of red meat intake. Mm -hmm. And we can look at people or, or we can say, okay, here's three servings. So we can say, here's the difference in quintile that would produce three servings a week of difference in red meat. And we can say, what's the relative risk for a three servings, for three extra servings of red meat a week? And then we can say, okay, well, here's, here are 
general diets, dietary patterns that correlate with red meat consumption rather than just look, examining the red meat itself. And if there's a stronger, and we can look and say, okay, with respect to the quintiles of whatever dietary pattern it is. So for example, one of the dietary patterns was following the, <laughs> affirming the statement, I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want. That was actually one of the studies that was pulled in one of these meta analyses. There are all a bunch of different diets, dietary patterns. And the point is that they generally tracked with meat. They generally correlated with meat. So the, the following a certain dietary pattern, which people take to be unhealthy, correlated with meat consumption. And what they're doing is they're comparing the dietary patterns. They are comparing the, the most, the highest quintiles mm -hmm. of following these dietary patterns that happen to track with red meat consumption to the lowest quintiles, the lowest, the lowest category. It doesn't have to be quintile. It could be tertile or quartile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're comparing. What they did was they compared that to the relative risk. So they, they got a relative risk from that. They mm -hmm. pulled the red relative risk. And then they compared mm -hmm. that to the relative risk of, for various different outcomes, all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease. They compared that to the relative risk of a, having th three additional servings of red meat per week. It could be processed or unprocessed or mixed. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Are, are you tracking what I'm saying? Okay, so you're saying that they're looking at the lowest and highest, you know, quintile, tertile, whatever, of red meat consumption, and kind of similar to the. Uh, what so was not, it? so not, no, they're not. So they actually didn't. They could have done that, but they didn't. Oh. They're looking. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. Okay. Wait. They so. Are... Well, I mean, I. So, well, if you want to walk through it again, yeah, I, I yeah, get yeah. the. I, no, I, you know, we have to. We're gonna have to get through it. We, we have to walk through it because this is really important. So, here, here's what here's what they did. So there are certain. So Isaac, there are certain dietary patterns, and these dietary patterns, adherence to a given dietary pattern, mm -hmm. can be broken up into. Uh, let's just give a hypothetical example. Can be broken up into uh, quartiles. So let's say, the dietary pattern is I'm gonna eat whatever I want whenever I want. Let's yeah. just give that a okay. bit, which is sure. by the way a real which is a real example used in one in one of the cohorts pulled. But yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, if you can stratify that, I adhere to that diet twenty five percent of the time. I adhere to that diet fifty percent of the time. I adhere to that dietary pattern seventy five percent of the time, or I adhere to that dietary pattern a hundred percent of the time. Yep. Okay. Right. So you can stratify people into categories, mm -hmm. and yep. then you can compare the same thing. Divide the risk of the highest by the risk of the lowest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the point is that there are given dietary patterns that correlate with red meat intake. Yes. Yeah. But the main thing we're tracking here is in this comparison is we're not tracking red meat directly. We're tracking the dietary pattern directly. Mm -hmm. The other thing you could do is you can take the highest versus lowest consumption of meat. Mm hmm. And you can compare it to that. Now, that's not what they did. Mm -hmm. What they did with when they directly tracked red meat was they did it for three servings a week. Mm -hmm. So they said, let's we, we took the studies where they had all different, they had where they broke them down into different intakes of red meat, and they compared whatever the relative risk would be calculated, whatever the relative risk would be for a three serving size, for a three serving difference per week. Mm -hmm. And that's what they compared it to. So they made that comparison. They're comparing what's greater when we pull all the data. Do the dietary patterns have a higher relative risk? They have a higher effective size or the effect size, or does tracking the red meat directly give us the higher relative risk? Okay, I need to understand that more carefully. Yeah. So mm -hmm. tracking the red meat directly is looking at the relative risk between what two groups? The groups in the highest, uh, well, the groups in the, well, let's give it, let's give, let's give the easy example. Let's give the example of what the paper didn't do, just so you can understand. Yeah. So what, so what the paper could have done, and again, this paper didn't do that, was we can say that we can get a, the relative, what the relative risk is for the highest consumers of, of red meat, mm -hmm. studies that are like looking at red meat, 
or consumption. Yeah, and the lowest, and yeah. then divide, and the lowest. Yeah, yeah, and so we get a relative risk. Mm -hmm. And then what we can do is we can say, okay, let's look at studies with dietary patterns. Mm -hmm. That and they maybe have more red meat on average in them, but they're just that's just something that's correlated. So, sorry, are we are we in both cases like so? You're talking about getting a relative risk by looking at mm -hmm. you know who's adhering to this pattern a small mm -hmm. percent of the time or a large percent of the time, and then doing mm -hmm. a division. And I understand yeah. like dividing the risk that you know associated with each. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about doing the same thing with like consuming meat. And, yeah. and then what are we, what are, where are we and then, and then comparing, and then comparing the relative risk to each other. Oh. Which one's higher. Okay. Yeah, sure. Is the relative risk higher for, but you know, when you divide like high, high red meat consumption by low red meat consumption risk, or when you divide, you know, high adherence to dietary mm. pattern by low adherence to dietary pattern yes, risk. Yes, exactly. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I follow. Okay. And now, by the way, they just also to, now to build on that, that's, so they didn't do that comparison. Mm -hmm. They did the highest adherence to the dietary pattern compared to the lowest adherence to the dietary pattern. They got a relative risk for that. Mm -hmm. and they compared that to not the highest red meat consumption to the lowest red meat consumption, but to an increase of red meat, a, a decrease of red meat consumption, a difference of red meat consumption by three servings per week. Mm, okay. Okay, so it's not a highest to highest, lowest to lowest comparison. Yeah, it's a it's a highest to lowest and highest three lowest three and times three a week ser versus, three servings yeah. a week com comparison. Yeah, that's what they did. Now the inference here was that if red meat is really causative to like things like cardiovascular disease, or maybe it'll cause mortality, mm -hmm. cancer, then we would expect to see higher effect sizes in the studies directly tracking red meat, in the meta-analysis directly tracking red meat, rather than the meta-analysis that was done tracking dietary pattern adherence. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the argument that's being made. Which is sketchy. They, which is incredibly <laughs> sketchy. But there's, some, there's numerous problems. So we'll get into all the problems with that. But, well, you've laid that out as just a modus tollens okay. here. So you're saying, yeah. if red meat likely causes problematic health outcomes, then yeah. red meat is associated yeah. with problematic. Well, let's before we get to the modus tollens, let's just let's quote. Let's make sure this is. We're going to quote the okay. paper. We're going to quote the authors. Quote: We hypothesize that if red meat and processed meat were indeed causally related to adverse health outcomes, we would find stronger associations in studies that specifically addressed red meat and processed meat intake versus studies addressing dietary patterns, end quote. Mm -hmm. new, new, also, quote, in our assessment of causal inferences on unprocessed red meat and processed, red, and processed meat and adverse health outcomes, we found that the absolute effect estimates for red meat and processed meat intake were smaller than those for dietary pattern estimates. This is weird. Indicating that meat consumption is unlikely to be a causal factor of adverse health outcomes. We anticipated that if unprocessed red meat and processed meat was indeed a causal factor in raising the risk for adverse outcomes, the observed association between unprocessed red and processed meat and adverse outcomes would be greater in studies directly addressing the lowest versus highest intake of unprocessed red or processed meat versus studies in which meat was only one component of a dietary pattern. Now let's ignore the fact that they didn't actually, they didn't actually look at studies addressing lowest versus highest intake of unprocessed meat and processed red meat. They did it for three servings. That's where they got their results from. Mm -hmm. But it, let's syllogize the argument. Okay, P one: If red meat likely causes problematic health outcomes, then red meat is associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree than dietary patterns are. Premise two. So this is P implies Q. Yep. Premise two, red meat is not associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree than dietary patterns are. So, so not, not Q. Q. Yep. Conclusion, red meat does not cause problematic health outcomes. So not P. Yeah, modus tollens. So that's that modus tollens. Yeah. We're going to attack both premises. We're premise one and premise two. Mm -hmm. uh, the easiest premise to attack is premise one. Obviously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's the... It's like 
it just doesn't follow. <laughs> it's like, why are we? I don't see that? what's the argument. What's the argument for bean flies cube? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if look, obviously, if Red well, Meat... you don't you don't ever have to provide supporting arguments for arguments. I mean, why <laughs> would why would you ever do that? You mean to provide a syllogism for a syll for, for this policy? <laughs> 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 oh fucking idiot all right yeah let's keep going uh, all right okay so if so if red meat causes okay so look red meat can cause problematic health outcomes and the dietary patterns can just cause more problematic health outcomes or do it to a greater degree it doesn't follow that if red meat causes problematic health outcomes then it would have to do so to a greater degree than certain dietary patterns obviously yeah also they can interact in a synergistic manner like it, it just doesn't. It just there's no argument for P1. There's no reason we would we would think it's more likely. Could be, if anything, it, it could be. For all we know, it could be more likely that's not the case. I have no idea. But it doesn't have anything to do with red meat being part part of the causal pathway. If you can show that dietary patterns have a greater effect size, okay, maybe there are other worse things there. I don't know. Okay. I'm also going to reject the second premise. P2 is going to be rejected as well. And here's, it's it's a lot harder to reject P2. And, but I'm and gonna, to, to be yeah. clear, you don't need to provide, like, it's it's a helpful, like, intuition pump or whatever, but you don't need to provide counter options to P1. Like, you can just say, I just don't see a reason to accept this. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. I just don't see a reason to accept it. Yeah. Right. But yeah, providing the counter options is obviously nice yeah. also. And by the way, I'm going to say the same thing for P2. I don't see a reason to accept P2 as well. Mm-hmm. But in order to say that I don't see a reason to get P2, I'm going to have to go very empirical and show that their reasons for accepting P2, their data for accepting P2 actually isn't, doesn't actually get you to P2. Mm -hmm. All right, so their supporting meta-analyses, there were five. Mm -hmm. um, several are gonna be taken off the table real quick. Yeah. So the first is the effect of lower versus higher red meat intake on cardiometabolic and cancer outcomes, the systematic review of randomized trials. So this is at the top of the evidence hierarchy, but this is actually the worst meta-analysis. Um, the reason is it's not actually a meta-analysis of randomized clinical trials of lower versus higher red meat. No such trial was actually included in the meta-analysis. The trials were looking at low-fat versus high-fat outcomes, and that was just a proxy, something that correlated to meat consumption. Mm -hmm. This effectively, effectively makes the meta-analysis fall in the category of a dietary pattern rather than an analysis of involving meat directly. Mm -hmm. This would be fine if the authors actually classified it as such and used it as a dietary pattern in their comparison, mm -hmm. but they did not. Furthermore, the serving size of red meat only amounted to a reduction of 1.4 servings per week compared to the standard of three servings per week in the comparative studies directly examining red meat intake. Also, by the way, they only they after every, they weeded out all the trials they didn't like. They only ended up with one trial. Mm -hmm. I believe it was the Women's Health Initiative trial. Mm. Um, You're cutting out. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I am I cutting out? Am I? Uh, am I? You am, were. You're there now. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So, yeah. So, so basically, the problem with this meta-analysis is it it actually just falls into the category of of an, an indirect measurement. You're actually measuring a dietary pattern rather than red meat consumption. Yeah. Okay. And All so right. that would be okay if they put it into the dietary pattern category and compared it, but they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So you're not actually, and it 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 didn't track with a great degree of red meat anyway. Okay, so, okay. That's, this... so that's one sketchy thing to include. Yeah. The second so paper... Let's just yeah. make sure mm -hmm. I, I understand this. So you would... You'd want that to be class of... Well, wait, it's not like it could even be classified in the other... Ooh, one second. So you're classifying them either as tracking red meat or as tracking dietary pattern. And... You'd put it in the dietary pattern category, yeah, because it's not directly tracking red meat; it's tracking like yeah. fat, basically, high fat, low fat. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Sure. Oh, so, by the way, my uh, hotspot allowance actually is only fit, has uh, 
ten percent remaining for my uh, for my data. So okay, I'm gonna try. Yeah, so I'm go we might have to end it soon. But well, wait, wait a parts. wait, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also that will give us the option to I'll I'll edit the video so that way. Uh, and I'll just upload it like unlisted or something, so we can. But wait, it. but wait, I'm going to I'm going to try to switch over to the connection here. No, 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 that... no, no, no. That connection is sketchy. That's that's. No, a... no, no. It was it was it was if it, it was sketchy and when there were a lot of users, but it might not be sketchy. Okay, um, wait, so wait. Two yeah. two things. So, I we'll think just try. We can try, but yeah. th this is actually what I'm thinking. Um, I think because I'm also getting complaints on multiple platforms about the um the pausing it seems to keep doing yeah. that so what i think might be best actually you uh why don't we make it through nutrix and then yeah. i say that we call it there and then we resume mm -hmm. and i'll actually just edit and upload the debate such that we can play it without it um g giving us that content id bullshit that's pissing everyone off so we can do the second half without that kind of annoying shit happening right so, right okay yeah. It'll, it'll make for a better stream anyway and i mean yeah. we, we are how far are we we're about we're about halfway so yeah this is pretty much what happened last time hey guys we're, yeah. we're gonna go for fucking 14 hours actually we're gonna go for half of that by the way by the way we we could have done it if my if i didn't run out of data but i mean it's possible yeah. i would have died but you know yeah yeah <laughs> okay so do we do we have enough to make yeah. it through neutral yeah we, we, uh, let's go keep, through keep neutral, in yeah. keep in mind people have been super chatting so you don't want to let those people down that oh way. Yeah, let's, let me just let, let's just yeah, then. just make sure to reload the super chat thing so you see all yeah. of them. If there's a lot, the if chat. there's a lot, then let's just do that. If there's no, just yeah, yeah, let's yeah. There's a, let, let's just make sure we get the few. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll start from. So, uh, Hirani says uh, donates uh, two. I think it's euros. Um, uh, it says for your organic duckweed. <laughs> 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 uh, Stephen. Anthony Jolly says, "May I be unbanned in Discord?" No fucking uh, idea who that is. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Go talk. Thank you for go the talk to the mods, like literally everyone else. Uh, I, I don't even know which Discord you're talking about. Are you talking about my Discord, or you're talking about Ask Yourself Discord? I mean, there's a higher probability they're talking about my Discord. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Stephen Anthony Jolly donated again, one dollar ninety nine. Thank you. Uh, it says at Banana Warrior Princess cannot find Discord surf. Well, okay, the, don't, it's not very a, yeah. pertinent. We okay. appreciate the donation, yeah. but yeah, yeah, let's let's stick to on on topic things. Yeah. Eli Powell donates two dollars. Says yeah, snail octopus. Octopus. <laughs> okay. Thanks for reading S the emojis. That, that is important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, S I P donated five dollars. Says thanks for doing this, Avi. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome from fucking the other guy sitting here for six hours. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Nick Hasmeric donates one dollar ninety nine. Says, "Would you be willing to debate Logan Blake again?" Absolutely, I've extended an offer to him. Yeah, there was something weird that happened there. Like, basically, I told Logan Avi's happy to debate him. Mm -hmm. Initially, he didn't want to, but he came by the Discord looking to debate Avi, and that was when Avi was doing the like helping Wilkes out and stuff, and he was focused on building up this very stuff that we're going through now. So you can see what a task it was. Mm -hmm. So. I think yeah. Logan thought Avi was trying to, you know, snub him. I might be mind reading there, but mm -hmm. that's not the case. Like, if you see how much fucking work this took, it's just that he got caught up and he has to prioritize, right? That was on a deadline to right. help him out for the debate. But, you know, we can certainly yeah. clear time. You know, we'll record it. We'll put it up on the archive. So, yeah, just yeah. just come by the server, you know, just let us know and we can set up a time. Yeah. Um, Jesus Ice uh, says, thanks so much for doing this, Avi. Love you, buddy, my dude. Twenty dollars. Thank you so much for the donation. Love you too, buddy, my dude. Uh, Nick says thanks for all that you two have done and continue to do. From Strawberry, from Strawbaby and I, Strawbaby and Nick, power vegan couple right there. Are they uh, actually a couple? 20... I don't. I can't. I barely oh, remember. I barely remember Strawbaby. Wait, Nick Kazmarek or Liston? No, neither. <laughs> What? Oh, I don't fucking know. No, okay, I, you, don't, I can, you don't know that. I, 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 can, okay. I can remember Straw Baby from, like, a long time ago in the Discord. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't remember her personality. I just no, it's like, I, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, Nick and Straw, they're like the power, the power vegan couple right there. Yeah. They're in my, they're, they're two mods in my Discord, dude. I'm out of the loop. I'm out of the loop. Yeah. Oh, Nick, the guy with the, I, oh, I know, I know who Nick yeah. is, actually. Yeah, I've seen his username. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Cool, we made it through the soup. Okay, any new? No, okay, we have any what's your time. what's your um, hot spot? Oh wait, we have more. <laughs> yeah, they do <laughs> that. Sometimes you're like, oh, we're reading super chats. Right. You hit reload. And now they decide to super chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caleb, business owner says, "Love you, buddy, my dude. Two dollars, love you too, buddy, my dude." Caleb, uh, Nicole. Oh, another power vegan couple. Nicole and I. Um, this was great to drink my smoothie too. Thank you. Two dollars. Thank you, Nicole. I'm I'm happy you're drinking the smoothie as well. Yeah, and um, I'm glad that we, you know, had you point out that James pointed out that it was a chicken. It is a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Let's let's see if uh, let's keep going as far as we can go. Um, okay. Do, how much how much do you have left on your hotspot? I don't know. I don't know if it'll just um, keep going. Um, What's it saying? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, 4G smartphone has 10% remaining on its monthly 15 gigabyte mobile hotspot allowance. Your hotspot will reset in the first. I mean, 10, look, 10% 10, 10 is fine. Let's get through yeah. Nutrix and yeah. then let's call it yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going back to uh, yeah. the server. Okay. Nutrix. Let's fucking do it. We're at. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the paper. Um, okay. The second paper. Yeah, so the second meta analysis. We, 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 kind, we kind of. We're a bit all over the place here. So we need to. Okay, so the second paper yeah, to take off. Just, the just to yeah, but let's just re remind everyone of the framing. Okay, so we got basically going through all this. We we syllogize the argument for the paper, right? If red meat's likely to cause problematic health outcomes, then red meat is associated. Uh, sorry, if red meat likely causes problematic health outcomes, then red meat is associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree than di dietary patterns are. It's P implies Q. Premise two: Red meat is not associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree than dietary patterns are. Not Q. Conclusion: right. uh, Therefore, red meat does not likely cause problematic health outcomes. So that's therefore not P, forms modus ponens. Obviously with a you know formal argument, you're just gonna say that if you accept the premises, you're committed to the conclusion, you wanna reject it, you have to reject one premise at minimum, we're rejecting two. So obviously the first one, no idea what the fuck the argument is supposed to be for that. So, <laughs> you know, give us an argument for the argument if you're not a foot soldier. And then yeah. premise two, we're getting empirical about it. They're claiming that this there's not uh, red meat is not associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree than dietary patterns. We're going through the studies that show uh, that's the case and and raising issues with them. So the problem with the first study, um, uh, what was the problem with the first study? Um, oh yeah, it was it was yeah. mischaracterized uh, or misclassified as being a. Um, uh, a uh, red meat study, but it was actually looking at fat, which is a proxy for meat, so it should have been classified as dietary pattern. So dietary that's pattern. issue number one, and then it, we're on number two right now. So this is all going towards rejecting P two. Yeah, and also it, was, it, it didn't even look at a height. It was only one point four servings, and it resulted in only one trial. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, and and then the second paper to take off the, is the. Uh, health-related values and preferences regarding meat consumption, a mixed method systematic review. Mm -hmm. This paper uh, simply examined people's belief about meat and if they liked the taste of meat. And if they <laughs> valued it or if they thought it was healthy, they found that people liked the taste of meat, they thought it was healthy, it was important for their whatever culture or whatnot. Or mm -hmm. But it didn't look at health outcomes. Um, I'm not sure, or, or as they relate to red meat, and I'm not sure why this is relevant to the comparative analysis of the health effects. Of directly measured red meat compared to dietary pattern proxies. I'm also Wait, not sure. Wait, what? It just looked at their beliefs. Oh yeah, you want to want to open the paper? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Open the paper. What? Health-related values and preferences regarding meat consumption. What? <laughs> yeah. So it's is it? It's not finding any health outcome data. It's just uh, uh, it's, it's it's just finding data about their preferences. What the. <laughs> Are you serious? To identify and evaluate evidence addressing health-related values and preferences regarding meat consumption. Okay, that's, yeah, that's fucking weird. So why is that being, that's insane. Is that, that seems like too Here. obvious a problem. Like, how is that a thing? How could they be including uh, something? 19, in... 172 initial citation. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Four addressable illness through inception. 13 studies reported that omnivores enjoy eating meat. 18 reported that these persons consider meat an essential component of a healthy diet. And yeah, who the fuck cares about believe... this? <laughs> yeah, I know. How is this, how is this relevant to whether the association with uh, yeah, it's, red it's meat not... and... Yeah, I mean, that's just... What? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's fucked. And why, right. I don't even know why so that's we'll, in there. Yeah. Let's just take that off the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It reminds me of like a Discord debate when someone's citing like random garbage at you. You're like, yeah. well, that doesn't support your conclusion. 
at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Harvard, uh, so Harvard actually did a summary of the three remaining meta-analysis that actually did look at outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where we're going to spend most of our empirical work on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Vermui. 2019 paper was the meta-analysis of dietary patterns. So the Zaraktar, Zaraktar 2019 and Han 2019 were the two meta-analysis directly examining the effects of red meat. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the screenshot, the summary of the three meta-analyses. Yep, got it open. Oh, okay. It's pretty small. But so, yeah. okay. Um, so follow along in the Discord if you if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, so. The Vermui paper was the dietary patterns, and they found total mortality, that's statistically significant, 0 0.87, uh, and they also gave the absolute risk reduction. The absolute risk reduction is one, the... One second, um, I'm just banning mods, don't unban that race lever guy, fuck this guy. Um, okay, sorry, go on. Um, they also gave the absolute risk reduction, and this is in a metric in terms of 1,000 people. So what that is, is with this given relative risk, the absolute risk comes out to be a difference of 15, in this case, per 1,000 people. So we, if we look through all of these metrics, so there's total mortality, cardiovascular mortality, total cancer mortality, cardiovascular disease incidence, total cancer incidence, type 2 diabetes incidence, you can see that the effect sizes are greater for the dietary patterns than for actually looking at three servings of red meat unprocessed or processed per week. Are you you're following? No, I'm trying to absorb. Um, okay. Let me make sure I'm following this. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I, I mean, I guess I can just get you to repeat. What? So walk me through this. Yeah, sure. So if we look at so we see, we know what the relative risks are. These are the relative risks for total mortality, cardiovascular mortality, total cancer. CBD incidence, still cancer incidence, type 2 diabetes incidence. And they're being split up comparing these two studies. So the, the Han study looked at cancer metrics for three servings of red meat. The Zirakt car study looked at cardiovascular metrics mm -hmm. for three servings of red meat. And the Vermui paper looked at dietary adherence patterns. Mm -hmm. And the effect sizes were stronger for the dietary adherence patterns for these metrics overall. Mm -hmm. Then for the three servings of red meat, right? Okay. For the same metrics. Yeah. Now, just looking at the relative risks and absolute risk reductions, would you agree with that? I didn't look at the numbers, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So that's so that, in yeah, line it comes with their. Out, yeah. 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 It comes out supportive of P2. Yeah. Yeah. So as we can see, the effect sizes are indeed greater in the dietary pattern analysis than the direct analysis of red meat. However. The weighted average serving size difference of red meat consumption was not three servings per week in the dietary pattern analysis. Wait so one <laughs> second. I don't know if my brain's just not working. The weighted average serving size difference of weekly red meat consumption was not three servings per week in the dietary pattern analysis. This is important because it could be that the. Well, I guess I'll let you continue. Yeah. This is so. What do you understand what that means? Like, so for example, yeah. if you were to weight, you see, yeah. There's more, there, the dietary patterns analysis actually comes out to be more than three servings yeah. of red meat a week. Mm -hmm. This is important because it could be that the reason greater effects were seen in the dietary pattern analysis and the red meat analysis was simply because the dietary pattern comparisons involved a greater reduction of red meat or greater difference of red meat than the red meat direct comparisons in the first place. Wait, which is not, so, which is not to say that dietary patterns have a larger effect in virtue of like being dietary being patterns, the dietary it's just patterns. In, in virtue just of being a larger being... red meat reduction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <It's laughs> a larger red meat <laughs> yeah, well, if that, if and it's not that that is the case, it's that a, that's a possible explanation. Yeah, it's so a possible. It's it, a pos yeah. yeah, okay. So then we, yeah, if that, as long as that's a possible explanation on the table, we don't have a reason to accept P2. Sure, yep. All right. Okay. So the, so from the Ver, Vermui paper, among the 27 studies reporting on red meat intake, unprocessed, unspecified, or mixed, the difference between extreme adherence categories was less than two servings per week in six, per week in six studies, two to five servings per week in 17 studies, 
and more than five servings per week in four studies. In the 19 studies reporting intake on processed meat, the difference between extreme adherence categories was less than two servings per week in, two, in four studies, two to five servings per week in 13 studies, and more than five servings per week in two studies. Now notice what they do here. Notice that they don't actually give you a weighted average for how many servings difference uh, the totality of evidence gives you. Uh -huh. They just split up and they say two, and they don't, and they say two, they have the two to five servings per week category. They don't, they, they ha have the tail ends around three. They don't tell you if it was over or below three. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I decided to do was just go through every single individual study <laughs> that these men <medical> <laughs> 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 and uh, table yeah. out I, so what I, I mean so let's yeah let's do it so let's go to that screenshot for the Excel oh file so God. I don't know if you're going to be able to read it just, yeah. I just will never understand you okay so let, <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright I'm looking at it I got it open alright so what I did is I just pulled uh, the studies the same way that they, they did mm -hmm. um, here I listed the studies and then I listed the serving size differences in the highest versus lowest category of dietary here patterns. And I split it up based on red meat, serving size differences of un unspecified red meat, mm -hmm. and serving size of uh, mixed red meat, and serving size of unprocessed red meat. Mm -hmm. Now, the I also looked at the number of participants in the study, and that was N, the mm -hmm. N column. Mm -hmm. So I used that to calculate a weighted average. Mm -hmm. I calculated a weighted average for all of these different categories. The categories of the serving size difference of processed and red meat, serving size difference for unspecified red meat, serving size difference for mixed red meat, and serving mm -hmm. size difference for unprocessed. Okay. Yep. So now we can go keep going. So what did I find? In the dietary pattern <clears throat> analysis, the weighted average for each category of meat came out to be the following. For processed red meat, it came out to be 3.4 servings per week, 13% more red meat consumption than three servings a week. Mm -hmm. For unprocessed red meat, it was 3.59 servings per week, 20% more red meat consumption difference. Mm -hmm. For mixed red meat, it was 3.24 servings per week, which is only an 8% red meat consumption increase difference. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the kicker. Most of the red meat that was not processed fell into the, quote, meat, a red meat not specified category. So the proportion of how much processed versus unprocessed red meat determines the serving size. Nutrix defined their serving size as follows. And I'll grant them this because this is fairly consistent with the literature. So again, remember that serving size, a serving size isn't the same amount of mass or mm -hmm. calories yeah. for a given type of food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for processed red meat, it's accepted generally that a serving size of processed red meat is 50 grams. Mm -hmm. Mixed red meat was taken to be 100 grams. And unprocessed red meat is 120 grams per serving. Mm -hmm. Red meat that was not <laughs> specified could theoretically be anywhere between 50 grams and 120 grams. Mm -hmm. Because in a ridiculous scenario where it's all processed, it would be 50. In a ridiculous scenario where it's all unprocessed, it would be 120. Mm -hmm. And it could be anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. You're right. It could be 100. It could be if it's if it's mixed. But it, if it's mixed and it's so mixed so that it's almost all processed versus almost all unprocessed, it wouldn't make sense to use 100. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we assume an unrealistic steel man and say that all of the unspecified red meat was unprocessed, we get a serving size difference of 3.27 servings per week, which is 9% more red meat consumption. Mm -hmm. If we assume that the unspecified red meat had the same process to unprocessed ratios as the mixed red meat category, we would get a serving size. So that would be using 100 grams for a serving size. Mm -hmm. We would get a serving size difference of 3.92 servings per week, which is 30.6% more, more red meat consumption difference. Mm -hmm. If we assume equal processed and unprocessed red meat in unspecified red meat for an average serving size of 85 grams. So what I did was I just said, okay, well, the, the average yeah, difference yeah. between one, yeah. We get a serving size difference of 4.61 servings per week, which is 53.6% more red meat consumption difference in the dietary mm -hmm. patterns. Mm -hmm. And if we assume an unrealistic straw man, 
that all the unspecified red meat was processed, we get a serving size difference of 7.85. <laughs> <laughs> serving two hundred and sixty. Okay. So I gave all the values. I said, here's what yeah. we would expect for an unrealistic steel man. Here's what we expect for everything in between. Here's what we expect for unrealistic straw man. Yeah, and just the the kind of yeah. fair equal medium gives you like 53% yeah. more red meat, which is substantial. Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, the serving size difference for unspecified red meat can be anywhere between... 3.27 and 7.85 servings per week, but I suspect the true value is closer to 3.92 to 4.61 servings per week. So it'd be between like around 30 to 50 percent more red meat consumption. Mm -hmm. In any case, across the board, the dietary this is for everything for for processed, unprocessed. The dietary pattern comparison resulted in more red meat intake than the direct red meat comparison when you do the weighted average. Wait one second. The, um... Because look, for processed it was three point four. For yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Everything okay, was about yep, three. I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it may not be surprising to see greater effect sizes in dietary pattern comparisons compared to the direct re meat comparison. It's simply not an apples to apples comparison. It could just be that the that the effect sizes are greater in virtue of having more red meat, not because they're in virtue of following a different dietary pattern. Mm -hmm. So. This um, I'm trying to tie this back to P2 now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So let's go back to, yeah. So P2 is red, oh, red meat is not associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree than dietary patterns are. So mm -hmm. the point here is that if you were to make an apples to apples comparison and you were to look at dietary adherence when red meat is equalized, the degree of red meat difference is equalized. Mm -hmm then that may not be the case. It might not be the case that oh. you see that, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. So ba yeah, so that's just taking, that's just a reason not to put this study in basically. Oh wait, no, no, but this yeah. is this is what you get when you pooled the res wait one second. I'm a bit lost with where these results all came from. Was this all from one study or did this you pooling the whole this results all, for this all of all, them? I, I pulled the individual um, primary literature papers Okay, so e even when you pool them all, you mm -hmm. get. Um, see, I'm not. I'm not totally tracking this. So the pro sure. the problem you're saying the problem is that it's not apples to apples. What would apples to apples look like? Apples to apples would look like. Here's what apples to apples would look like. Um, apples to apples would look like a. On my view, it would look like a. You would compare the highest dietary adherence to the lowest dietary adherence. Mm -hmm. And you would compare that to the highest red meat intake to the lowest red meat intake. Yeah. Okay. And this is not apples yeah. to apples because no, well, it, because it's because not it, that, but... it because not only is it not looking at the two factors comparing highest to lowest, it's also taking the first factor and placing it into it, yeah, into in, itself inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So Wait. the point is, so P2 that says red meat is not associated with problematic health outcomes to a greater degree dietary patterns are, it could very well be you, that yeah, it is associated yeah, you, you don't, to a greater degree. So let me see if I can say this right, because I think I may understand, but I'm not 100% sure. So the issue is you can't say that red meat is associated to a lower degree with um, uh, these outcomes than uh, dietary patterns when your investigation of dietary patterns, if we actually look into it, is also um, uh, c could potentially just be um, could could be higher, could be m m more highly correlated with those outcomes in virtue of having increased red, red meat. meat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I didn't say that great, but I think I, I get the idea. Yeah. So basically, you're you're not doing. You're not you're not actually finding out if dietary patterns uh, are are uh, more correlated with these outcomes than red meat because the red meat is like in the dietary pattern basically. It's yeah. like it's like and you're it's not separate. Yeah, it's to a greater and it's in there to a greater degree than the red meat comparison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I think I think I, I basically get that. Yeah. So maybe by analogy, yeah. like you can't find out if bikes or motorcycles are better. Uh, you know, at traveling a given distance, if you like include motorcycles in the bike category, bike category <laughs> is that to is a that greater like... to a yeah to yeah. a greater degree than yeah, even the motorcycles. Are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. 
so that that's pretty funny so yeah that's a good yeah. basis for saying fuck p2 and p1 is just sketchy on yeah. its own so this neutral yeah. thing is sketchy yeah you want to do a final uh, super no check we're not check done or? we're not done we're gonna have three thought. more neutral sections oh shit oh <laughs> wow okay yeah how are we on i'm, I'm worried okay. about your wi-fi how's the wi-fi i don't know can you can you am i the, still the coming hot, in like no i mean the hot spot how how much... I, oh i don't know it's not i haven't gotten any text so i'll just keep going until it runs out <laughs> all right let's just yeah let's try yeah okay. and you can you're still streaming so you can read the super chats if i if i know i i'm not in your account i can't read them. oh okay oh okay i will i will send them to you okay <laughs> um nutrix uh relative risk and effect size though. oh yeah i'm there okay. i'm there so another issue that they mentioned was that the effect size were very low so the, they say called it minuscule actually um so let's examine what happens instead of comparing three servings per week of red meat versus uh, of red meat uh, three servings per week difference of red meat versus the highest and lowest tiers of dietary patterns and let's compare the highest and lowest red meat consumption to the highest and lowest tiers of dietary patterns mm -hmm. so in, so you're following yep oh i'm following okay. yeah, you're, yeah you're comparing highest and lowest red meat to highest and lowest dietary mm -hmm. pattern adherence right yeah yeah now I calculated this. Are these in... are your numbers here in this little screenshot I've got? Yeah, it? these are these are my numbers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I took this from the supplementary tables. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so we have the first one here. So this is just the same the same things. And I in I had the relative risk, and then there's a slash. I have the absolute risk reduction there, mm -hmm. and then. We'll get into what cumulative absolute risk reduction is. So what I did was I, this is instead of comparing, I, I just compared the highest to lowest intakes and what those relative risks would be. And what I found was that for some metrics like cardiovascular mortality mm -hmm. um, or uh, cardiovascular disease, yes, let's see, CBD mortality, Yeah, so for CBD mortality, some some red meat actually was, not all, but some red meat actually did have a greater effect size. So oh, wow. if you look at <laughs> if you look That's at funny. mixed mixed red meat, which was yeah mixed mixed red meat, mm -hmm. um, that was at zero point eight three mm -hmm. as an effect size compared to zero point eight six mm -hmm. for the lowest risk highest. Now I'm granting that I'm just yeah, and and I'm I'm granting that I'm cherry picking the mixed red meat, but so in some cases, it actually doesn't pan out. And the other things are actually pretty, pretty similar. The unprocessed red meat was 0 0.88. Mm -hmm. um, the processed red meat was 0 0.88, and it compared to 0 0.86. So technically, that's, it's, but it's very, very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, for total mortality, the numbers, the numbers yeah, co collapse to a great degree. They get much closer to each other. Sure, yep. Um, or... Let's see. For total for total cancer incidence, the unprocessed red meat was actually had a had a greater effect size, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't statistically significantly different. The effect size was greater. Mm -hmm. um, and then for whatever it's worth, I included the low risk of bias studies only bias that as bias studies as defined by how these same authors define them. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we I, we only they gave criteria to when to use those and for most cases they didn't apply but for whatever it's worth if you only include the lower risk of bias studies they actually um, much where they would be more likely to go have a greater effect size than the dietary patterns wow yep so in some cases in some cases when you when you do this comparison you actually do get a greater effect it's not clear that it's, clear, it's not clear that overall <laughs> not, not that that's even meaningful anyway because p1 yeah not but... even medically anyway because of p1 <laughs> But it's actually, yeah, P2 doesn't actually become very, P2, P2 isn't really clear. Yeah. It's yep. not in every case. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and now, why are the effect sizes so low? Why is it that, so here's the thing. Here's, go open that, um, open the thing again. Open that screenshot again. Yep, I've got it open. If you notice the absolute risk reductions for total cancer mortality, Mm -hmm. and total cancer incidence. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that they're higher than CB, the absolute risk reduction of like 5.8? Mm -hmm. 
for total cancer mortality is like 11.6 out of a thousand cbd mortality is 5.8 you would think red meat would be more associated with cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular mortality than cancer mortality mm -hmm. i mean am i wrong about that would you or would you have the the when you say like red meat is problematic i mean we heard it's cancer but what do you think it's more problematic for heart disease or cancer yeah, I mean, you'd think CVD, but I, I mean, I don't yeah. fucking know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, no, it, yeah, CVD, I think it's CVD too. Um, and I was surprised to see the cancer absolute risk reductions to be higher than the cardiovascular risk reductions. And there's a reason for that. So here's why. It should also be noted that the effect size for CVD is low compared to the effect sizes for cancer, since they used a lifetime risk analysis for cancer but only a 10.8 year risk analysis for CBD measures. Oh, okay, so there's way higher likelihood yeah. of them having, okay, yeah. that's that's weird, yeah. So from the paper, quote, we calculated the risk difference by multiplying the pooled relative risk reduction from the meta-analysis by the population risk for cancer incidence and mortality. The Global oh, Cancer weird. Statistics, GLOPEN, produced by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, provided the cumulative risk for developing or dying of cancer before age 75 years using age-specific incidence and mortality rates based on 184 national data registers. We use these rates to estimate the population risk for cancer, the lifetime risk. The, so here they posted that, and I think that it came to about, like, or some, like somewhere between 10 or 18, uh, 18 for incidence and like 10 point something for mortality. And they just multiplied the relative risk by that absolute risk, by that baseline risk, and then they got, and that was they got the answer as a a, a risk from age zero to seventy five. Yeah, but Basically. that, but so, but the fucking problem yeah. is like they're not. Maybe there's another problem, but they're not like actually really seeing throughout someone's lifetime what's the risk they're like doing a kind of like they're making some kind of inference there basically they're yeah like doing like a multiplication making, based on yeah they're making, they're making an inference they're making an inference but yeah. but really to the point is they're not doing the same sort of inference with cardiovascular disease yeah yeah for mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease the 10 the 10.8 year paper comes from uh i cited the paper and supplement for where it comes from if anyone wants to look it out because mm -hmm. i calculated my I, I made sure the numbers came out right when i calculated it Mm -hmm. um, if we calculated CBD mortality and absolute risk reduction magnitudes based on a lifetime risk, just like they did with the cancer metrics, so apples to apples, mm -hmm. we get substantially higher magnitudes. Oh, weird. I use the following data to calculate. So I, I use this New England Journal of Medicine paper to calculate um, the base to establish a baseline risk. Mm -hmm. And according from this paper, the lifetime risks of death from cardiovascular disease in the pool co cohort were higher among men than among women, but we're similar between blacks and whites. White men, 36.1%, black men, 33.0%, white women, 22.26%, and black women, 27.1%. To steel man the red meat side, I took the lower values for both men and women and averaged them so that slight sex imbalances wouldn't likely offset my estimate to the point where I would be overestimating estimating the total risk. Mm -hmm. The overall risk came out to be 29.8%, which makes sense since the average cumulative risk of cardiovascular disease death mortality is about 30%. Mm -hmm. I added the ARRs based on the lifetime risk of the above table. As we can see, the ARR magnitudes are now substantially larger with lifetime risk assessment. So let's scroll all the way back up. Mm -hmm. Go to yeah. the go to that screenshot. The, uh, yeah, I'm in the table. Yeah. Um, yeah, so total, now go to the t uh, CVD mortality. Mm -hmm. And you see the number all the way to the right-hand side? Um, that's what yeah. the wait, yeah, well, so that's wait sorry all the way to the right hand side and cbd mortality yeah. there's there's yeah. a bunch wait one yeah second. so you see 5.8 and you see 41.7 mm, yes yeah yeah, yeah yeah yep yeah. okay yes. yep 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 so 5.8 is the 10.8 year absolute risk reduction that's 5.8 less people out of a thousand people are going to die in 10.8 years yeah but if we do it for a lifetime if we do that for, at, for, over a course of a lifetime, it be five point eight becomes forty one point seven. Mm -hmm. So, and then this, and then the same thing goes down the list. You can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, if we do, if we actually do the lifetime risk, just like we they did it with the lifetime risk for cancer, then the magnitude of the effect size that they said were so small get multiplied by a factor of somewhere between five to ten. Holy shit! Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that, so that's that's pretty yeah. fucking substantial. 
Yeah. Ten, a tenfold better. <laughs> <laughs> Five so, to ten tenfold better. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's around seven, like yeah. a factor of seven off. It's pretty, yeah. pretty intense. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go to Nutrirex. Okay, so the point of this oh is to say that they were saying that the, the effect size was low. The effect size is low because they didn't do an apples to apples comparison for the effect size for cardiovascular disease the way they did it for cancer. Yeah. They only looked, yeah, they didn't do the lifetime risk. They did 10.8 years. Yeah, and if you adjust it appropriately, then the effect size turns out looking yeah. normal. Effect size become much larger. Yeah. Yep. Nutrirex grade, though. All right. Okay, so grade, a grade is a system by which we can be certain how to determine how certain we are based on evidence. It's, it's, um, it could be found in best practice. Let's actually click on it. Best practice BMJ, that link. Mm -hmm. I've got it open. Should I keyword search? Something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'll go to the table one. Yep. Okay. Table one. So what, here's what it means. So when it says very low, it just means the true effect is probably markedly different than the estimated effect. Low, the true effect may be markedly dis uh, different from the estimated effect. Moderate, the authors believe that the true effect is probably close to estimated effect. And high is the authors have a lot of confidence the true effect is similar to the estimated effect. Mm -hmm. Now, the way grade works is that studies that are randomized controls trials start off as a high grade. Mm -hmm. Studies that are epidemiological, prospective cohort studies, start off as low. Not very low, they start off as low. Okay. And there are certain criteria by which you can upgrade or downgrade the evidence by t by uh, by up to two by up to two categories. Okay. Okay. So high could be downgraded to low. Yeah, very low could be upgraded yeah. to yeah. Now it is subjective, but there are still certain criteria by which you could you can upgrade or downgrade. Mm -hmm. One way is risk of bias. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to fully go into that because I don't have a contention with the way the authors did that. Another way is imprecision. So imprecision would be um, if the 95% confidence interval around the best estimate of the absolute effect, um, it's, it's imprecision regarding that. Certainty is lower as the clinical decision is likely to be different if the true effect was at the upper versus lower end of the confidence interval. So let's say you have a targeted treatment effect, and even though there's a statistically significant effect, for the targeted treatment effect, the confidence interval overlaps it. You would say that that's imprecise. Um, mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons to rate it down. Another one is inconsistency, when there are several studies that show inconsistent effect when considering whether or not it should be rated down. Um, so one thing you could do is look for heterogeneity. The IE squared um, test is a test for heterogeneity. Mm -hmm. I should have gone over that when we went over forest plots. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, other, the other thing you can rate down for is indirectness. Indirectness is one of the things we mentioned, actually, that looking at um, and they did rate this down for indirectness, to their credit, um, was that they looked at uh, the randomized clinical trial looked at fat. Yes, which is of not meat. directly, so yeah. You're, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're indirectly looking at something. Now, they shouldn't, they, they shouldn't have just indirect, they shouldn't have just rated down for indirectness. They should have also categorized it differently because it's also a dietary yes. pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then publication bias. Um, okay. So what is increases? What, where, where, when would you upgrade the evidence? Reasons to rate certainty evidence. Um, in some cases, you OK, so evidence can be rated up as well. So when, the criteria for that is, one, when there is a very large magnitude of effect, which I don't necessarily agree with. It depends what you mean by large magnitude. If you mean absolute magnitude, then yes, I agree. If you mean relative risk, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. We went over why. Yep. Um, second, when there is at least, when there is a clear dose response gradient, mm -hmm. this is the point of contention I have with them. Third, when residual confounding is likely to decrease rather than increase the magnitude of the fact. Mm. So basically you say, Hey, you didn't control for these confounders. And then they say, well, well, listen, based on everything we know about these confounders, if we did control for them, the the, our findings would be even more supported. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so those are the, the, the three main ones. There are some more ones, but those are the main ones. So let's go back to the Discord. Okay. Because the thing is, they did find dose in across the board here, like in, in many of these cases, they did find dose response relationships mm -hmm. with red meat. So but that my central issue with the grading of the evidence with its certainty was that there was no upgrading for a dose response effect. 
Yeah. Even but... though that's part of the grade guidelines. Now, right. here's what a lot of vegans are trying to make the case. A lot of vegans are trying to make the case that, well, you're, you, they shouldn't be using grade guidelines. Grade guidelines are used as part of the pharmaceutical. It's, it's a standard for pharmaceutical. Yeah. And with nutrition, you should use a different grade guideline for determining what's, certain What's things. the reason for thinking that? I don't know. I don't, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we don't like it and it's normally used in another context so bad. Yeah. Great. I think they would say something along the lines of because, uh, because with nutrition, you have to study that for so long, you have to do these things that you, you just can't get good data the way you can with pharmaceuticals. But the fact that it's hard to get good data doesn't mean we should be more confident of the, that the data is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I actually don't see a symmetry breaker, and I disagree with all the vegan criticism of Nutrix that they shouldn't have used grade. I think they should have used grade. I you think just grade think they fine. should have done it correctly. I think they should have applied grade correctly. I don't okay. think I don't think they applied grade correctly. And I, I and I know that grade can be come down to subjective judgment calls, but this was really this one in my view was really out of the park. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I understand, by the way, that Gordon Guyot was the guy who wrote the book on grade guidelines and how to do them. And he was also one of the authors of this paper. So that makes me even more amazed. Mm. Yeah, because you have respect for that yeah. guy, don't you? Yeah, I have. I mean, yeah, he wrote the, he wrote the grade guidelines paper. He practically wrote the grade guidelines. I think he did actually. And um, he's he, nothing in his guidelines say to not upgrade for dose response for the reasons that the authors gave here. Mm. So, I mean, look, let's, let's uh, here's the quote. Yeah, what did they? Yeah, okay. Here's the quote. Complementing existing grade standards and to determine whether we should rate up for a dose response effect. Oh, they just modified the standards. What? Yeah. We assess the plausibility Plausible. of a causal <laughs> relationship between meat and adverse health outcomes by contrasting results from two bodies of evidence cohort studies specifically addressing red meat and processed meat intake, and cohort studies addressing dietary patterns associated with varying red meat and processed meat consumption. We hypothesized that if red meat and processed meat were indeed causally related to adverse health outcomes, we would find stronger associations in studies that specifically addressed red meat and processed meat. So it's the same syllogism yeah, what for the... not upgrading the evidence. <laughs> so the reason for not upgrading the evidence is the fucking sketchy syllogism. Great. Syllogism, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So, <laughs> so, firstly, the, I mean, there's no mention of using wow. this comparison I, I, as a means... The part that annoys me is the use of the word <laughs> complementing, like complementing the standards by modifying yeah. them. Complementing right? existing grades. So, uh, yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah. It's like, look, I'm just complementing just... existing grades. I, I just I, noticed I, that. Holy I, shit. I, I'm just I'm just complementing the flavor of the cake by putting salt in it. It's like, what? <laughs> I love it. I just actually noticed that even though I quoted it. Like, it's, yeah, it's just funny language. They didn't use the existing that. Like, they're it's, making it's it like, like... like they should use a word like abusing or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, at least they did that. At least, like, at least they're being open. Like, hey, we're not using actual existing grade standards here. Yeah, but it's we're, like... We're they're... complementing the grade standards. Yeah, well, you know, we're complementing... Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that's... <what> <laughs> okay, that's that's silliness. So oh, okay. they, they modified the standards to not upgrade the dose-dependent studies, which would go against right. their conclusion, which we don't have to assume there's intent there, but that's weird, obviously. And yeah. their basis for doing it was the sketchy syllogism. The silly syllogism. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So basically, like, okay, now you're not... now. So this is what Vegan should be pointing out. What should be pointing out was that these authors actually didn't use grade. They used their complemented grade ver grade proprietary we, system. We are not following them in using the word complement. We, yeah. They're... they're <laughs> we can say modified <laughs> or shat yeah. upon or something. Yeah. They used a modified grade system by which you don't upgrade, by which we have new criteria for not upgrading dose response effects. <laughs> which, and did you by any chance, I guess you didn't do with the upgrading and then see how it came out, eh? No, no, we know how it would come out because the evidence was was rated as very low to low. And if we upgraded one for one, it would come out to be low to moderate. Wow, okay. All right. Yeah. So at least say in some cases there's moderate evidence for this effect size. There's moderate certainty for this effect size for red meat and these bad health outcomes. Okay, okay. Which is which is yeah, and which is fair. Right. Um so anyway, so yeah, there's no mention in the grade guidelines for this. They even admit it's a comp it's it's complementing the grade guidelines. And 
this reason in this inference is the same thing which we already went through. Uh, the authors can also conclude from the inference that, quote, using our findings in our assessment of the certainty of evidence, we did not rate up for dose response given the potential for residual confounding. That also is not a criteria for not rating up. Residual confounding is inherent in any prospective cohort study. Residual confounding is already accounted for in the first place by the fact that prospective cohort studies start at the low tier grade uh, of certainty rating in the first place. And this is the quote from what we just read. Evidence from randomized controlled trials start at high quality and because of residual confounding, evidence that includes observational data starts at low quality. Wow, it's, it's even, already it's even accounted, accounted for. for. That's actually hilarious. It's already, yeah. Wow. It's, so no, neither of these things, neither of these things. In one case, they actually admit they're using they're using their their own complement to the grade system, and in the second case, they just say they just pull something else out. They don't say they're complementing it, but that's not something that's a criteria for not rate upping for not upgrading for dose response effect. Now again, I know these this can come down grade can come down to a subjective value call in many cases, but it's we're not talking about like an effect size. Like, are we determining whether this effect size is too much? Where's the threshold? Like, no, we're not making a subjective call like that. We're just making shit up. Yeah, this is pretty just, hilarious. So the Nutrix yeah. paper is just it's like it's extremely bad. Like, there's a lot yeah. of problems. Like, it's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, I think I want to keep going. Actually, I don't want to stop. Um, I um. I think actually that I don't want, there's two reasons. There's the, um, there's the video cutout thing, which we should adjust. And there's the 10% thing. So I think that, and we're halfway. Let's, let's ask the chat what they want. Um, yeah, we can, but like, I mean, I think I want to know, I think that would be worth chat. fixing those things though. Chat, chat. Do you want us to stop and do this and do the second half another time? Or do you want us to keep going and finish, finish it up? What does the the say, saying the video hasn't cut out in a while? Well, that's because we haven't. Well, that's because we're, we're not playing, playing it. Yeah. It'll, it'll it'll do it yeah. the second we do it. It'll it'll start doing it when we play it. I mean, no, look, you'll get you'll wait. get the recording. They, yeah. what, what do you want? Chat, chat, just vote, vote if you want. Okay. <laughs> You're over, okay. One, 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 one to keep going. Two to stop. Well, one to keep going. Two to stop. Everyone's saying keep going. It's pretty unanimous. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly, look, I look, think if I, I think, can't, if I, yeah. I can't do it, look, if I can't do it, if I end up running out of data and I and the connection is too sketchy at my place, then we'll have to stop. But we're gonna be based well, on what the chat wants. Yeah, we're gonna keep. We're gonna try it. Uh, wait, no, no, no. I think I think that I kind of want to lay down the law. I think that I do want to stop at this point. I think we should pick it up, um, and we'll do it with the video edited, and we can do it with the Wi-Fi good, and it'll be better. Like I'm, I'm thinking that is a better choice. So. Then we're halfway. It's perfect. I think that right now this is a good place to call it for today. As much as I love it. Oh, man, I really want to continue. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, 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 let's call it here and let's um let's pick it up and, and do the rest then. How but, long did we go for? We went for about eight hours. Okay. Yeah, about, Just like last time. Yeah, yeah. About, about the usual. We should we should make sure there's no additional super chats. Yeah, though. there's additional. There's additional super chats. Okay. Oh, man, I wanted to keep going. Okay. I, I know, I know. But yeah, I think I think let's for now. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so, oh, Strawberry donated another two uh, Canadian dollars. Foot Soldier has a rockin' hard on for Isaac. I mean, he's just oh. an idiot. We've, he doesn't understand basic logic. He spent forever trying to avoid uh, the obvious fact that name the trade is a sound argument. I destroyed him live in a first debate on my channel where he couldn't generate a syllogism. I destroyed him a second time on Vegan Gains channel where he wouldn't admit that he didn't have an argument for p4 or concede that the modus ponens containing p4 was uh on, no there's no reason to think it's sound then finally i debated him in the server he admitted that uh there's no argument for p4 and therefore that that argument there's no reason to think is sound then he ended up conceding the entire argument is sound and now he's just on some bullshit about the argument not being the argument so Foot Soldier's an idiot. He's conceded that the argument is sound. I wrecked him multiple times. Avi yeeted him also. I don't know what to... Would you add anything to that? Or is that basically... Would you just give the same take? No, um, yeah. I mean... I don't... Yeah. Okay. Of course, we... It, it's funny how, like, so many other, like, t tangential people end up making it into... <laughs> lesser books to make it Yeah, uh, Yeah, what an idiot. Okay, let's, uh... 
I, and and yeah, uh, you know, if he ever sees this, I hope I hope that you love the feeling of that concession. <sighs> no, I'm sure it makes you very happy. All right, let's. Right. Uh, let's Whoa, uh, when going. should we do? When should we do? Uh, maybe we should do next. Should, I think next weekend. Maybe we should do. Uh, yeah, should I mean, up again. yeah, next yeah, weekend. I can, I can make time easily. Yeah, it's something I like yeah. doing. Okay. All right, tune in. Tune in next weekend for part two. Yep, and. Uh, Maybe maybe spam. But yeah, let's Joe let's Rogan. yeah let's, <laughs> let's let's try to like, let's see if we could find a way to not get this copyright thing. Um, oh, I I can deal with that. That's it's I didn't know their algorithms doing that. Now we'll talk about that yeah. after. But right, yeah, right. fucking a. Okay, this was good work. We're halfway through. We'll do the other half later. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and now there's a lot of useful info out there. By the way, no no drinks, no food, and no pee breaks. Um, I failed on all <laughs> of those. <laughs> <laughs> all right you had a list you had the grapes without the seeds okay that is true yeah no seeds fuck all that shit okay we'll stop the stream for now all right. we'll pick up soon all right peace. all right thanks for thanks for watching thanks for